Hello everybody, George Kenner here on YouTube and in my Facebook group, Laser Freedom. I'm frequently asked, what should my first CO2 machine be? Very seldom do I ever recommend that you go out and spend all the money for an Xtool P2 uh, mom port or say a GWIC tabletop machine. Now there's multiple reasons for that, but almost every one of them is structural. There are some company differences between some of the way the professional companies operate and what I'm gonna call the starting companies operate. Now the first thing that I would probably address is the mirrors in the construction quality. The mirrors for this machine are small and they're very, very tightly placed in this machine. If you needed to replace or clean one of these mirrors, it's a lot more difficult than say the Eon machine. The Eon machine, you can literally walk over to it, unscrew one thing with your fingers. It's no harder than taking off a medicine bottle cap and you have replaced the mirrors. Also in many of these machines, the mirrors and lenses are proprietary. You've got to buy it from them at their price. It's not a universally acceptable piece. One of the other things, if you look at the tubes on one of these machines, they're very tightly compacted into the machine, difficult to work on. If you've been in the laser business for any period of time, you've probably had to replace a tube. Some of these machines, and let's go back to the old days of the Glowforge when it was popular, you literally had to package your machine up and send it back. Which would be better to have a machine that is broadly open and can be seen? When you look at this machine, I can tour you all around it inside and out, and I cannot show you the air compressor that feeds across the top of the to keep dust away from it so you get the finest engrave. In the other machines, you can literally walk up to the side of the machine and pull that out for a replacement. Many of these machines do not also run on the universally accepted commercial grade program, which is called Lightburn. This one says it does, but I have had multiple people tell me that they could not get it to work in all of the functions in the Lightburn program. Now, I don't have any experience with that. This machine was sent to me as a, a test machine. It works. There's no question that it works. But when you look at the cost differential between one of these and say something like the Mira 5, you're gonna go to the Mira 5 if someone shares that with you. Service on one of these, you don't really have the exact same amount of space you can take and pull out this tray. It will remove the grit, the grid and or the slats so you can elevate it and get something larger and gain more Z height. It'd probably be better just to go and get the deeper machine to start with. The amount of service work that you've got to do, this machine, if you go over to the laser head and try and remove the lens to clean it, you've got to lift a cap, it has a bunch of, and I'm showing you this, it has a bunch of electronic componentry in there that could get dirty. That's probably not optimal, and it's not like any of the other machines that are um, in the classification of the Eon. You walk over to the Eon, you pull the lens out, you clean it, you put it right back in. Time is money. Another reason that the professionals stay away from it. If you pull this out and you strip the threads on that, who wants to deal with that kind of nightmare? And you're gonna have to go back to this machine manufacturer to get any kind of replacement part. Some people are, I, I don't know of an American distributor for this machine. It's not like you go down to Hobby Lobby and get you know spare parts for it. It's just not that way. By the way, do me a favor. I'm seriously considering not doing these videos anymore. My girlfriend's telling me that I need to start traveling and enjoy my life a little bit more. If you really enjoy these videos and you find that there's any value, please let me know down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up because I am seriously considering stopping doing um, 
the YouTube channel. It costs me more money than I make in total. I love this hobby, but it, it's, not get, it's not a financially rewarding thing, and I might as well be spending, according to my girlfriend, my money going on uh, cruises and that type of thing. Life's only so long. If, would I buy one of these? Probably not. Um, would I encourage people to buy one of these? No. If you want to get involved in the engraving business, go to something like the ISA show. As a matter of fact, as, as I'm publishing this now, there is a logo jet and a laser meeting that's being done by LogoJet and Eon down in Georgia. They frequently have these all over the United States. If you were to go to the International Sign Association show, now that is where all the professional engravers and sign makers go and all of the larger machines are featured. When I went to the ISA down in Florida last year, there was such a huddle around the Mira 5 Pro because these companies realized that they could set or dedicate this only to do tumblers. They would set it up and leave their larger machine for larger projects, cutting wood, signs, you know, that type of thing. Xtool, Montport, they're not at those shows. You can go to the International Sign Association show and see the vendors that are there. There's a reason that these guys don't go and try to sell to the pros. When you look at even the difference in the gauge of wire that's on these machines, you can see the value that companies like Eon put into their machines. If you have any questions, come into Laser Freedom, ask me, put your comment down below. I'd love to be of assistance to you, provided that Grace, my girlfriend, doesn't pull me off of YouTube altogether. Please leave a comment if you like these videos and if I've ever helped you make a selection. I wish you the best. Thank you.